Hey, good morning, everybody. John here at Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. Man, do we have a lot to talk about? I've tried to make, I think I've got about five videos now, and they've been all the super negative, mainly focused on Games Workshop and their activities lately. So we're going to hold off because they've been I've mixed a lot of bias. A lot of anger, disgust, really not even anger, disgust, uh, with news and facts, and there's a blurring of the line, so I've just had to like stop doing those videos. So <laughs> what we are going to focus on, however, is what we can that's positive, and that's what we're going to do today. So all sorts of cool things are about ready to happen for a games workshop, um, Let's first just dive real quick into, we've been seeing signs, at least since last year, about new orcs, which has been really, really cool. We've been super excited about new orcs for Warhammer 40,000. Uh, we've seen a lot of new models, some really awesome looking new models. And uh, today we just got a brand new article, uh, kind of a callback to a classic character. I don't know if any of you remember old Zogwart. Um, he was like the man or the orc, um, classic old psyker orc that, or weird boy, as they're known, that could, you know, at least he had the ability, I think all the way up to fifth edition, he had a psychic power that if you hit and all the conditions were met, which I think just, they had to make a saving throw, um, you that character, that model, was turned into a squig, which was great kill, uh, character killing because there was just no no way around it. You were you're, you lost your character. You lost the model. He was dead, 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 dead. Kind of like the old days with the giants in Warhammer Fantasy where you could um, pick up a model and I think there was either eat him or you stuff him down your pants. And if you stuffed him down your pants... Um, if the model, if the giant ever died, they can get out and rejoin the game. I remember I was playing, uh, I think it was the second round for Ard Boys, and I had a giant pick up Archeon, and we spent about 15 minutes looking at the rules. This is Archeon mounted on his horse, not his new super dragon thingy, and we, we couldn't find any rules against it. It took us about 15 minutes of arguing back and forth. And then finally the judge stepped over and was like, yeah, dude can do it. So I proceeded to stuff Archeon down the pants of my giant and run around the board, throwing every, uh, two more giants and a bunch of ogres in the path of chaos, mounted chaos knights as they r try to run me down to get him out of the pants. And the whole while, you know, I'm still capturing objectives and still winning the game, but I've got Archeons that I think that was big points at that point. And of course, you don't want him running around. Dude was so mad and, I mean, I felt bad, but I mean, it was within the rules, so, you know, it is what it is. So, anyways, that's old school stuff. And that they used to do. I don't think they're going to do it anymore. Now it's just, hey, you're going to take mortal wounds and eat it. <laughs> now this new psyker is pretty, <laughs> pretty baller. I was hoping that the that orcs would evolve a little bit, and model wise, they are. They're still a little squat, but I have a feeling they're going to be a little bit taller than the previous or the current orc boys. And you can see that they really fleshed out the muscles. Um, they're even, I don't know if that, the painted lines they have on there is, um, actual just paint or those are actual little muscle strands that you can see. And all they did was highlight them. I don't know. We'll see when the model comes out, but I still think it looks really cool. It's making these guys look beefy and monsters. So we're going to talk about were boys, which were weird boys. Um, I don't know if they're the same, um, but we're going to read, we're still, it doesn't matter. The War Boy cackle, um, has a power called Squiggly Curse. Now, this is the callback to Zogwart. Um, with its, uh, its ability is Witchfire. The Squiggly Curse has a warp charge value of 7. Pretty easy to pull off with 2d6, I think. Uh, a little bit above average, but I think it's it's definitely possible. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 12 inches of this character or this psyker. Roll a d6 for each model in that unit up to 6 dice. 
so that'll be good for those five man squads that people ton uh, love to run around right now. Uh, for each result of four plus, that unit suffers one mortal wound. If any models in that unit are destroyed by this psychic power, every other unit within six inches suffers one mortal wound. That's a pretty powerful ability. I really like that. That definitely kind of has that feel of just raw power that orcs have just being unleashed and everybody else suffering around it, just wild and chaotic. Not chaos, but just chaotic. Um, then they've got this ability. I'm guessing this is another psychic ability. Eyes of, of Mork, 12-inch range, Assault 2, Strength 6, minus 3 AP, D3 wounds. Now, this might not be a psychic power. This might be this device that he's got strapped to him. You can see he's got some sort of device back there strapped to his back. He's got the, the little lightning rods because the more orcs that are around him, which I'm wondering if this is going to play into effect. I'll get to that in a minute, and you guys let me know in the comments below. But the more power they get, uh, the more orcs around him, the more power they have. And I wonder if that acts as a receiver and an amplifier. Now, old rules for orcs, and still kind of rules right now, the more orcs that are around, you tend to get a better leadership. Um, one of the older rules was the more orcs that were around an orc psyker, or in this case, were boys or the old weird boys, is that the, the more that you had, the bonuses that they got to unleashing their psychic powers. And I'm wondering if we're going to see that, which would mean making this uh, warp charge value of seven probably easy. It might be something as simple because they like to keep the numbers low. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. It might be something as, as simple as, hey, for every, if you have 10 orcs um, within range of you, or a mob of orcs, I don't know, then you get plus one to casting. Or if you've got 20 or more, it might just come down to a number of units. But uh, if you got maybe 20 or more, you might get up to a plus two. I can't see them going up too high. I could see a plus one, maybe a plus two. It'll probably be for a unit that's got to be 10 or higher and you can boost their their abilities. So that could be cool. Now, if you're worried about these characters being targeted, it's a, it's a safe bet. They're definitely going to be targeted. But if they're following some of the older rules, which it, I get a feeling that they're modifying the old stuff and bringing it forward, they might actually get their minder boys, which are basically the poor orcs that are stuck taking care of him they're like the kids caretakers his nurses <laughs> making sure that uh, he's pointed at the enemy and not his fellow orcs so um i think good things are coming for orcs you guys let me know uh well speaking of good things coming for orcs now this picture was sent to me i know it's been flying around the internet i've seen it on a couple of the other bigger websites so i'm not gonna dwell too much on it i'm i, I don't really know who to get credit for because i really don't think my source gave it to me but yay my source is back so yay but i'm pretty sure that this has already been out and about so what you're seeing here is something i it's official i don't know if this is out of a magazine it looks like it's probably out of a, a white dwarf magazine or it might be um, something that was seen in store so what you're seeing here is a bunch of the new or not new but the Cadian. Um, shock troopers or basically the Imperial Guard troopers and the newer orcs. I know they don't look, it's hard to tell, but just looking at this one orc in the top right section of this group, you can see that massive Hulk-like body that it's definitely a new orc. And I think this one that's front and center leading the squad with a shoulder pad is the one that we've seen a painted model of. We got a charging one. These are definitely new kits, guys. Not the Cadians. Sorry, Cadians. You're still stuck uh, you got an upgrade sprue, congrats. But, uh, so this is good. Now, does this mean there's a new box set coming? It's possible. We had heard a long time ago about, oh man, I want to say two years ago, at least, 2019 before pandemic, we were talking about um, an, an Imperial Guard box was being developed, uh, a new battle box. And it was going to be Guard versus Eldar, but we ended up getting... Um, Eldar versus Space Marines and I think Blood of the Phoenix. So this, you know, that rumor might have just been a very bad rumor and they just happen to carry forward. This could be a new, I don't think it's a new starter set, so cool your jets. This might be just a new battle box because I think they really do want to get through 
Uh, and they've been doing that with the previous Space Marines by giving them two wounds and two attacks and all that jazz, or the the firstborn. Uh, they want to get rid of these kits. So what's the best way to do it? You make these amazing boxes with just a couple new characters in it and make it a good value financially, and you sell down this stuff. I mean, they've got to still have tons and tons of Imperial Guard uh, Cadian Shock Troops, just like they had tons of uh, Space Marines. And how do you get rid of that stuff so you can move forward um, d- later on down the line, right, to reveal new Imperial Guard, which I don't think we're going to see this edition, guys, probably next edition. But how do you get rid of current Space Marines? By making them very appealing, very um, economic. And that's what they did with giving them those boosts and wounds and uh, attacks and such. And dropping point values, everything like that. And and it worked. People, Space Marine players have been buying them up. Um, Vanguard vets are back uh, for about six months now. And uh, people are buying Devastator squads. A lot of things are... It is really amazing, and I've got to applaud Games Workshop in how do you move product you know is just going to sit on the shelf because of the new hotness, the Primaris Marines. Well, you make them worth buying in this edition. They did a great job. I'm not, I'm not uh, deriding them that or putting them down. I still, I'm still on that. I'm still adamant that within, if it's not by this next edition, definitely the the following edition. But I think this next edition. I think this is really the, the last edition for the regular Space Marines. I mean, when's the last time a, a Space Marine r- non primaris unit was created? 2017, 2016? The, the days of the Firstborn Marines, minus Horse Harris, which we're going to get into, it's gone. Now, does that mean that they're not going to show up in the next edition? I think they will. I think, they're though, a lot of it's going to get shuffled on over to uh, Warhammer Legends. I think it's going to happen, guys and gals. I know a lot of people disagree or they don't want to talk about it, but Firstborn are on their way out. Maybe not 100% on this next edition after ninth, but they're on their way out. They're, they're going to be gone. Primaris is the new wave. If, they, if Primaris wasn't the new wave, then we would not have basically two different Space Marine armies. I mean, it's, all, it's at the point where you need two codexes. You really do. You need the Firstborn Codex and you need the Primaris Codex because Primaris Codex has that much stuff now. I mean, it's it's its its own separate codex, its own separate army, really is. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about 30K. You know what? Let's not talk about 30K because I'm going to save that for another segment because I might have to eat a little crow on that. Let's talk about Warhammer Plus and then I'll do another video for... Um, Horus Heresy following probably in the next hour or two. I had to, I'm taking a break from painting the Dominion box. So Warhammer Plus got announced. A lot of detail. And it really, it's hitting the marks that we were thinking, some of us in private were thinking, okay, if they're going to make this work, how are they going to do it? You know, how much are they going to charge? What's going to be the best value? Uh, I, I assumed it was going to be like 10 or 12 bucks. Maybe it will be in the future, but right now it's not. So what are we getting with the Warhammer Plus subscription? Well, we have, uh, you can do it for a year, uh, for an annual, or you can do it uh, by month or monthly. So in short, what you're getting is weekly or every other week, basically you're getting episode, episodes of Warhammer animation. However long those videos are, some people are like, oh, they're just going to be 10-minute videos. Some are saying they're going to be 30 minutes. They're going to be full episodes. You know, some are hour. No, nobody really knows exactly except for, you know, the people that are directly associated with it. So until we know for sure, we're still going to get a plethora of Warhammer animation from everything involved in the Age of Sigmar, the Warhammer fantasy, and, and the... Warhammer 40,000 universes. So we're going to have uh, bloat <laughs> of animation to see stuff come into reality. Some of it's going to be garbage. Oh, let me walk that back. Not garbage. Some of it's not going to be super high-end animation. Some of it is. Um, 
But I mean, if you really want good animation, stop using Western animators. Sorry, guys and gals. But generally, unless you're like the people that do a lot of the DC animation, uh, you need to go out east. You need to go to Japan, um, Korea, China. You need to go to them for animation. Well, not so much China. Their animations is blah. But J Japan could have done a much better job. At any rate, um, weekly in-house Warhammer hobby shows. They kind of had that already, but cool. They're just adding value. Okay. A digital vault of classic Warhammer publications and White Dwarf issues. It's a positive. It's not a negative. It's a it's a it's a net gain. Let's go with that. We're gonna be positive. We're gonna be positive. So full access to Warhammer apps. This is really cool, and this is I'm not surprised about this one. This uh, the Warhammer Forty Thousand and the Age of Sigmar app. With the success of the Warhammer Forty Thousand app, at least I'm assuming it was successful. Uh, I had a feeling at some point in time, Age of Sigmar, and it, and it might not be. You might be able to still just do the Age of Sigmar um, Warhammer app for free, but I had a feeling that it was so successful that they're just going to go a hey, age of Sigmar. We're going to do what we're doing over here. Sorry guys, but you're going to have to pay now if you want the good service. Nothing saying that it is, but there's a good indication. So premium access to our official events. We don't know exactly, but we're going to dip down below and we're going to see exactly if there's any more details, exclusive subscriber offers. That's cool. Still don't know what that is. A freeze exclusive miniature worth at least 25 uh, sterling pounds every year. I'm not sure if that's a, let's just say 25 pounds. Access to a second exclusive miniature, uh, which means you all have to probably have to buy that one. Excuse me. So let's take a look. Um, we really don't know what the schedule, we don't know everything that's going to be coming. They're just showing us tons, tons of things, even though this looks like a timeline really isn't. Now, we're not going to listen to these these guys talk. So we got two different free miniatures that they, they showed off. One is this very, very, I mean, it. I almost jumped right on it. Uh, this awesome looking Vindicare Assassin. It's almost worth it. I'm hoping that a friend of mine will want to just go ahead and get uh, the Warhammer Plus just so he can get this orc since he really loves orcs and then i can give him the money to purchase this model so i don't have to subscribe hint hint clint <laughs> but that still looks pretty good um the, both those models look really nice i'm excited about uh the, that they're they're doing this they're not critical to the game they're really for collectors really at the end of the day uh scalpers are gonna i mean that by doing this, you're eliminating scalpers almost completely. Um, anyway, so we got tons of shows. This is all going to be starting around August 25th. Uh, Citadel Color Masterclass. Now, this will be good because you're going to be getting people from the heavy metal team to be able to help teach you some better painting techniques, which you can get for free right now, ladies and gents, from tons of people out on, uh, or out on YouTube land. So you don't need this for this. There's a lot better videos out there. But you know what? It's a part of the package. Um, I don't know what this Lore Masters thing was. It just looks like, you know, maybe some uh, episodes of Lore where they talk about it. I, I don't know how awesome that'll be. Um, if you're like a history buff, you like watching the History Channel and documentaries and stuff, this could be it. Now we're going to have Battle Reports. Some people will like that. But if you've ever watched a GW Battle Report style game, like an official one. Um, it's more fluff than it is watching, say, something uh, more competitive. Let's go with that. It's more about the fun. It's more about showing off the models and the hobby and some of the game mechanics, but not necessarily on the level of like, the tournament players out there. Will you get some value out of it? Yeah. All right, so let's keep wrapping this up. We have the Warhammer Vault with lots of stuff that's just extinct, but some people might like to use it because you can still use these rules, guys. It's your, it's your hobby. It's your game. It's your models. Now, you can't use these at an official event, but you can certainly use them whenever you want with whatever models you want. So, okay, there's good value there. Very good value for all of this. I'm digging it. White dwarfs have been kind of blah. All right, so 
the subscription, you're going to get some e um, event extras, VIP pad, uh, badges, priority access, and free merch. So in that case, there is that's some value if you are going to be attending a lot of events really next year. Um, and it looks like it's it's very fairly inexpensive, $5.99 per month or $59. Um, what is that? $59.99. Uh, per year let's divide that by 12 so it comes out basically if you do the annual you'll save $12 it's not too bad not too bad save $12 off the uh, year subscription okay and have access to all this stuff starting on August 25th and imagine it's going to crash so be prepared <laughs> whatever they got going on all right so with that being said, there's a lot going on. Le please leave a comment down below. And for those of you that have been waiting for the drawing that I was going to do since, once we got to 100 subscribers here on YouTube, um, at least on the Havoc Maker Studio, we're, we're 40 short from the 3,000 over on FMP Wargamer. So let's get there. Anyway, so over here on Havoc Maker Studio, we're going to be doing a double giveaway. However, I've only got uh, out of the 100 plus people that we have as subscribers, um, less than half of you or more than half of you have blocked, um, my ability to see your subscriber name. <laughs> so I can't even enter you into the drawing. I, uh, so to, to give you the opportunity to win something. And I know a lot of you jumped over cause you know, you want to support the channel and you're looking for free gear or free, uh, free giveaways, but I can't do anything if I don't know who you are so do me a huge favor do me a huge favor and uh, either um, um, there's a content there's a email description or link down below or the Facebook page or contact me on YouTube let me know who you are uh, or unlock it maybe you didn't even know that you locked it so I can see and I can get you entered I'm gonna give it a week Give it one week. This coming Friday, we're going to do the drawing regardless. And if you missed out, then you know what? You're still entered for the next giveaways. Anyways, you guys have yourself a wonderful day. I'll be back a little later. We're going to talk about the horse heresy, and we're going to keep it positive somehow, some way. Talk to you later. Have a good day.